So here's the value comfort dynamic in game essentially. If you are a girl, and we'll go to like times of evolution, right? You're a girl on the African savanna, right? Of like a million years ago. Um, you have a choice. You, if you're gonna mate with a man, you'd like to mate with a man who has good genetics and who's gonna pass along those healthy genes to your kids so your kids can survive, right? And especially in terms of um, resistance to diseases and that kind of stuff, it's very, very critical you get those good genes, otherwise your kids probably will die, right? Very important. On the other hand, there's also predators on the African savanna. You have to find food, and there's also like fights with other tribes and that kind of stuff. So you also would like to have a competent man around to help raise your kids, help, help them survive. And here's the paradox. The guy who is very attractive and has the good genes, he has lots of girls into him. And so he can go sleep with whoever he wants to, and he has very little incentive to stay around and raise your kid. Right? On the other hand, the guy who's a little too willing to raise your kid, Part of the reason might be that he doesn't have a lot of options, and he might not be the best genetically. He might be like a, you're losing the genetic lottery, but you're getting that guy to stay around. And so there's this weird paradox, right? So the guy who's the good genes but won't stay around, think of that as Mr. Value. The guy who's like, I will do anything for you, I'll do anything for you, and the girl's like, but I don't want anything from you. That's Mr. Comfort, right? And there's definitely such a thing as too much value or too much comfort, either way. If you can get the right mix, you have some of both, that's the ideal. And girls will find that a couple different ways. They'll either choose the most high value guy they think will still stick around. So this is like Mr. Value. This is Mr. Sort of Value, but I trust that it'll stick around. That's the guy I'll, I'll go with. That's a very, very typical common strategy. The other strategy is I'm going to choose Mr. Value, and then I'm going to take Mr. Pretty Comfortable, and I'm going to go cheat on Mr. Comfortable with Mr. Value and get pregnant with Mr. Value. Right? But those are, those are two very common Sort of female strategies, okay? But when you talk about value comfort, it's important to understand that because that's essentially why girls need value and comfort and essentially tells you the behaviors that indicate value and comfort. So when you're being dismissive, non-needy, a little bit arrogant, kind of being like casual in your interaction with the girl, you're being high on value, but you are reducing comfort, right? A lot of value, but you're actually bringing the comfort level down, right? If you're being really nice and accommodating, buying the girl, girl drinks, taking care of her, um, like asking a lot of intimate questions about her, really listening, you're building comfort, but you might be reducing value depending on the manner in which you're doing it. Right? And so that's the paradox. That's, that's a huge paradox of game. Most things that build value destroy comfort. Most things that build comfort destroy value. And given that you need both comfort and value in game, it means that you can't just do one thing all the time. If you're just Mr. Cocky Asshole, Cocky Asshole, Cocky Asshole, you'll get a lot of attraction early on, but later on, the girl's not going to trust you, not going to you know, want to go home with you, those kind of things, right? Not going to want to form a relationship with you. Um, obviously, if you go in and you're just kissing the girl's ass, you never get on her radar, she ignores you, nice to meet you, bye. Right. The major adaptation is going to be two things without value and comfort. One, how much value or comfort does the girl need, right? Some girls are more value-based, some girls are more comfort-based, right? And so you're going to need some of both with every girl, but some will have more of one or the other. So that's the first thing. The biggest cultural adjustment, because that's within a culture. Within a culture, some girls will need more value, more comfort. Right? The biggest adjustment from culture to culture is going to be what constitutes that value. What, what, is, what is that value? Right? So a girl who is raised in a social media YouTube culture is going to respond to certain value indicators, whereas a girl who's raised in a very traditional small town agricultural culture in a, in a small community where everybody knows each other is going to respond to different value triggers. Right? Let's say, for example, I'll, I'll take my, my job. I'm a, well, not my, my actual job, but the general character of my job. I'm an entrepreneur. Let's say that as my job. Right? Dating coach is an interesting one with girls, so let's not go there. <laughs> um, but say entrepreneur is your job. Okay? Um, certain girls will find that incredibly attractive. Girls who are entrepreneurial themselves will find that attractive. Girls whose parents were business owners will find that attractive. Girls who have known entrepreneurs will find that attractive for the most part. But Girls who were raised with very traditional, like um, oftentimes uh, if their parents were immigrants to a country and had to like work hard, get an education, and wanted them to get a professional degree and, and go that route, they might think of entrepreneur as low value or risky or something like that. And they've been told, meet a guy who's a doctor, meet a guy who's a lawyer, meet an accountant, something like that, right? And so for them, that what constitutes value for them in your job is actually different, right? Um, for some cultures, American in particular, being a little bit cocky can be a good show of, show of value. In other cultures, if you're cocky or like overtly cocky, it can be a little bit more of a turnoff for the girl. Right? And that's, that's dicey because cockiness is very attractive, so you have to find a way to be cocky without being cocky.
it's kind of weird. But the point is, you're going to make those cultural changes, mostly in terms of what is value within that culture. Right? And even within a culture, what is value to that girl? Because even if you go across, you know, across London, there are 50 different cultures of girls within the city of London. Right? So you need to adapt to that. So that's the adaptation you're going to make. But that adaptation only comes after you're already being an attractive guy. Right? There's no amount of adapting to the girl's blueprint that's going to make a guy who is needy and kisses the girl's ass attractive. It's not going to work. And there's no amount of adapting to the blueprint that's going to make the guy who's completely detached asshole and never willing to connect a palatable, safe choice for most girls. Right? So you need to first be doing good game, and then you, can, then you can kind of adjust. A lot of guys go way too far with trying to adjust to the differences between girls. Right? They're like, oh, OK, so European girls, they need more comfort. So I'm going to go up and I'm, I'm going to just like walk up and be like, hi, I really like you. I'd like to get to know you. And you're never going to give them a, a negative emotional spike. You're never going to tease. You're never going to flirt. You're just going to be really, really sincere. And yeah, you are adjusting to the fact that they need more comfort than like an American girl. But you're destroying everything that is good game in that process. Right? You're adjusting too far. Right? And you don't want to do that. You can be between, this is like the nicest guy in the world. This is the biggest asshole on the planet. Anywhere in here is good game, potentially. Right? And so with a cocky American girl who thinks she's the shit, you want to be towards the asshole end of that range. With the, um, the shy Asian girl who barely speaks English and was raised with like very, very traditional values, you want to be towards the low end of that range. And so you want to adjust. But if you ever adjust outside of that range, you're getting nothing. Because all of a sudden, you're just doing bad game. You have deviated too far from what an attractive man is. Okay? And so the first thing you want to be thinking of is just what is good game. And up until a pretty advanced level, I would actually really, really prioritize that even over adjusting, even over making an adjustment to the girl or anything like that. Okay? Um, but um, if and when you are going to start to adjust, um, the most important dynamic to adjust on, in my opinion, is value comfort dynamic.